Are you guys ready for some actually pretty good animation for a fairy tale episode and heavy handed symbolism all in one episode? Well, I hope you are because that's what we get in this episode. So let's get started. Yeah, so I know the schedule's been a little weird in the past few days just because I was a week behind with posting, so I wanted to get caught up with this, so that's why Fire Force and Fairy Tail are all coming out at the same time, and it's kind of weird. But I really actually enjoyed this episode, with a couple exceptions, but not many, so let's get into what I actually did like about this episode. So in this episode, we get a lot of tie-ins to previous episodes, which... My biggest complaint is that they reused a bunch of animations, like with Mavis and Zaref in the woods. Obviously, that was just something that we've already seen before. They're just reusing it and adding new context by having a handful of animations in there. But that shows and ties into the fact that we have finally got the answer to who is truly Zaref's son. And it's not Larcade, like I thought. I nailed it on the guess. Larcade is simply a, another experiment, another Aetherius before Natsu. And the only reason he was able to keep the Dragneel name is because he came out rather well compared to the others. And yeah, I never thought I'd see an episode with Larcade in it where I actually felt bad for Larcade. Somehow, Fairy Tale manages to do this with a handful of characters who were bad guys, where they end up making you feel somewhat sympathetic to a character who has been completely unsympathetic to literally everybody else in the Fairy Tale Guild. So, I mean, that was something, I guess. Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's actually break it down from the starting to the end, and that way I can talk about what I did and didn't like in context. So the beginning here was literally a second recap, basically a full-on replay of what we've seen before, where Precht discovered that uh, Mavis has the curse of Anselm, and we also see, of course, the very intimate and uh, loving moment between uh, Zaref and Mavis. And there was nothing new there other than the fact that we now have context added later, but not immediately after. So it was literally just recap, opening, more recap. Oh, fairy tale, I love you so much. Now granted, after this extended recap, we get some of the best animation I've actually seen in quite a while from Fairy Tale, which is kind of funny because I don't really think of shonen anime as long, drawn out, well animated, like fight scenes. I usually think of it as still image or a handful of frames in animation sort of deal. But look at this! Like the fight between August and Guildarts actually got a lot of good animation, moving backgrounds, moving characters, panning cameras. It actually had a lot of really good stuff. Now, it was no Yutsuka Nakamura style animation like we saw in My Hero Academia or pretty much anything with an uncompromisingly beautiful camera shot, but it was up there, especially considering the show that it was attached to. And of course, a lot of this action and a lot of this anger with Guild Arts is coming from the fact that, well, August essentially wants to push and test to see how much Guild Arts actually cares for his daughter and how far a fatherly bond can go. Even if it's one-sided, because Kana does care about Guild Arts, it's kind of obvious at this point, but not to the same degree, at least not that it seems, he cares about her. And that's kind of the overall theme with this, is that it takes a lot for Kana to sort of care about Guild Arts, but she does, in, in the bottom of her heart, she does care about him, and she doesn't want him to die or go away, but in a way, she doesn't want him around all the time. She's independent, but also still cares about her father, as most characters in this show would probably be if they still had parents. Either way, Larkhead keeps asking, why did the son of Zaref never actually get to experience fatherly love or parental love? And um, we get an answer to that at the very end of the episode, but we get some, some more action in the middle, which I thought would be something else, but it actually ties in and pays off pretty well to what we saw last episode. So I mentioned at the end of last episode that I loved how we have Zaref walking towards Natsu, and we're uncertain what the next step is going to be between those two, but we do end up getting a bit of a payoff in seeing that it does just continue as a fight, but it was actually a pretty well done fight. We have Zaref going all out, Natsu obviously going all out, and Mavis seems to have some kind of plan because she orders everybody except those two, except for Natsu and Zaref. She orders Lucy, Grey, and Happy all to leave the guild hall. And during this, while the fight is commencing, we see, of course, 
that Larkade is making his way back to back to the guild hall. And now in this instance, we actually see with Zaraf that he's beginning to enjoy himself with this fight. He's he's experiencing a fight that he has not had in a very long time. He's getting to see Natsu come at him with as much power as possible. It's it's apparently entertaining for Zaraf, and of course Natsu points out that Zaraf is is insane at this point. And Right at the point where we have sort of a pause in the fight for Natsu and Zeref to talk, Larkid comes in and tries to get Natsu to sleep, and Zeref doesn't take too kindly to this. So clearly this entire time, Zeref has wanted to fight Natsu one-on-one -on -one at his full strength to see if Natsu can kill him, but also to kind of get one last sort of hurrah and, and good fight with Natsu. Um, Clearly, originally, it was an intention of death. You know, Natsu wanted to fight Zaref, and Zaref basically wanted Natsu to fight him at full strength and kill him. And whether or not Natsu dies, Zaref wanted to fight him at full strength and originally be killed. His current goals are kind of weird, but that was the idea. And that is why he did not take too kindly to Larkade interrupting the fight. And then we get a cut to more information in context with what we had seen at the beginning to Mavis having the Curse of Anselm and seeing what Precht is discovering. Now, I usually hate recaps, but the fact that this recap actually ties into a bigger part of the story with more context, I can kind of forgive it just because it was actually kind of necessary since we haven't seen that moment for quite a while. So being able to actually go back and realize, oh, hey, yeah, this happened earlier and now we get more information, I'm totally all right with that, and that's when we discover that Mavis and Zaref did the deed, and she had a kid. And at this point, the heavy-handed symbolism was very apparent. We had sort of an idea at this point. Like, if you didn't think that it was going to be August who was who was Zaref's kid, I'm sorry. Like, he basically spelled it out at this point, and I, I don't know what to say if you didn't think that was the case, because. Well, <laughs> Larkade this entire time was saying he was the son of Zaref, but piecing together the fact that Zaref didn't treat him very much like a son because everybody, well, the Dragon Slayers thought that uh, Larkade smelled exactly like Natsu, considering we know that Natsu is an Aetherius, which is why he probably smells the same as Larkade, and considering the fact that August at one point said that he was the son of the Dark King or whatever. Uh, if you still thought that it was Larkade, I don't know what to tell you. Either way, it's up to Precht, or rather Precht feels as though it is up to him to choose whether the child lives or dies. And so he delivers the child, and yeah. And of course it is before and a little bit after this cutscene that Zaref blows a hole through Larkade, and it's where August is asking why did the child of Zaref never know love, never know uh, parental love or fatherly love. And it, it's such a like heavy-handed, like, they're trying to subvert your expectations, but in reality, I think most people have figured it out at this point. But yeah, essentially, Zaref blows a hole through Larkade. Larkade is actually very sympathetic because he had, he had been brought along, brought up in the thought and hope that one day he might be loved by Zaref, that he was Zaref's son, and all that, and in reality that just never happened, and Zaref dashes all of his hopes by saying that, you know, you were never my child, I have no such child, blah blah blah. It's rough on that guy, and somehow they managed to make a character who was kind of disgusting, kind of irritating, very unlikable, very unsympathetic, and make him into a sympathetic character. Like, of all the things that Hiramashima seems to be doing wrong by the end of this season. He kept to form with making characters feel sympathetic, even when in reality they shouldn't feel sympathetic. And I guess the whole kind of trying to subvert your expectations thing is another complaint I could kind of throw into this. They push so hard to make it feel like there's going to be something you're not expecting, but considering we've seen it all before and it's not a very unexpected thing, I'm not actually surprised anymore that that was the case. Honestly, I would have been surprised more if it was actually Larkade, but whatever, you know, it's it's fairy tale. There's certain things as a longtime fan that you just come to accept. 
And the rest of the story during this episode was actually pretty good. In fact, I'm actually very surprised, cutting back to the August and Gildarts and Kana fight, I'm actually very surprised that it took this long, like they actually managed to hold on this long to revealing what the magic power of August was. So it's been said for many episodes at this point that August has mastered every kind of magic ability. And it's not actually that. Now, previously in most of the other, actually all the other episodes involving the defeat of a Spriggan 12, we've learned that literally every Spriggan 12 has an ability that if you can hold out long enough against it, you can figure out what it is, and by extension, you can counter it. In terms of characters like Ajil, if you can hold out against his sand long enough, you can discover how to use a certain type of magic that would nullify it. You can discover that Discount Jason Statham simply turns invisible, and anything that he uses weapons-wise can also be turned invisible. Demaria's ability was basically freezing time, and if you could survive one of her time-freezing attacks or actually break through the time spell, you, she's basically a normal combatant that you just have to fight normally. The only character who was kind of broken in this case was Brandish, and they, they kind of just solved her issue by making her somewhat relatable to Lucy, and sympathetic to Lucy, and having her not fight anymore. So I was actually kind of surprised that this sort of outcome didn't happen sooner with August. So August's ability is to duplicate magic, which is why he was able to do all of these different things of dispelling magic, like fairy glitter, and all the other stuff that the uh, Irrational Sace, or not the Irrational Sace, nope, Prime Sorcier threw at him. But he had to dodge Kana's attacks, which were holder-based attacks, meaning that he couldn't actually fight or duplicate something that was based on a holder-type magic. And it's at this point when Gildarts figures it out, he's stabbed at this point, and we have all these different character emotional moments of Kana caring about her father and not wanting him to be killed, him willing to sacrifice everything to save his daughter. We have, of course, the discovery of what August's magic is, which, because Kana and Gildarts, I would expect nothing less of Gildarts, in fact, I was expecting it sooner, but they were both able to hold out long enough to be able to figure out what the magic type was, fight that magic type, and, you know, go on from there. And I genuinely thought that Gildarts was going to at least have a death fake-out in this, and I gotta give him props for not fake-out killing Gildarts in this episode. I was very concerned about that, but they didn't fake-out kill him, they just had him figure out the magic, break August's staff after being run through by August's staff, which was kind of nuts, and then using his prosthetic arm, which apparently can wield holder-type magic, and do a lot of damage to August that they haven't been able to up to this point. And it's with this that August probably at least to some degree knows now what the ability and the power of fatherly or, or caring parental love is like, because he really didn't understand it at all at the start of the fight, and by the end of it he saw how much power and how much determination it drove into Gildarts in order to make sure that he could protect his daughter, which was pretty awesome. At this point it cuts away to us watching more and more and more things that make us just feel so bad for Larcade. He wanted to impress his father so much, he wanted to make Zareph proud of him, and he didn't get that, and it was just a, it was, it was rough to watch, if I'm honest. It was, it was rough to see Zareph completely just abandon a character who cared so much to be, to be cared about by, by Zareph, and it just wasn't gonna happen for him. And I feel really bad about that, because that is, that is a tough pill to swallow for that character, and seeing him come to that realization as he's being beaten up by the man who he cared most about, it's rough. I do not like Larkade in any way, but they definitely did a good job of making him sympathetic. And of course at this point we get the final wrap-up with a bunch of flashbacks and a bunch of, not so much retconning, because it wasn't really something that was contextual to begin with, but we get a bunch of flashbacks of who's supposed to be Larcade, because they're cutting back and forth between August narrating and Larcade in pain and sobbing and sad, and these flashbacks of a kid in the past, and it's supposed to be like, who is it? Who is it? It's August. I don't know who you would have thought it was, but we have all these flashbacks of Precht abandoning August, and August growing up as a thief in the, like on the streets, and then 
coming across Zaref and working with Zaref, and then Zaref giving him a name reminiscent of the times that he spent, <laughs> the times he spent with Mavis. And so in August was when he, I guess, uh, did the deed and fell in love with Mavis. And so he named August after that. And at the end of the episode, we actually get this very touching moment of August saying, why did the child of Zaref never see any love from Zaref? Because Zaref never knew he actually had a son. And it's actually kind of, it kind of worked, I guess, in a way to his benefit, to August's benefit, because if he revealed to Zaref that he was his son, truly was his son, then at that point, either Zaref would continue to not uh, approve or not, not believe him or not care about him in order to keep him from being killed by the, the curse of Onkselem, or he would care about him and as an extension, August would die because Zaref would care about him. The things that Zaref cares about get killed. So at the end of the day, we get another ugly, well-done representation of the Curse of Anselm and this contradiction working against more than one character. It works against Zaref in many ways, but it affects everybody who is in contact with Zaref, including Mavis, now August, and in this case as well, Natsu. So we have all of these moments being tied to to the curse of Anselm and why, why the son of the Dark Lord Zaref never saw any sort of love and was not allowed to know love from a parent. Overall, it was actually a really good episode. I, again, had some problems with the flashbacks and some of the story writing, but overall, I think that it was actually surprisingly well done for what I thought was going to be kind of difficult for them to tie in. I knew that August was going to be the revealed secret son or whatever and not Larcade, but I wasn't actually sure if I was correct on the guess that Larcade was an Ethereus. I wasn't sure if I was going to guess right on whether or not it was August as the son between the two of them and how he got there. I figured it would be the son thing, but I didn't know how he would have gotten there or if it was like before Mavis got put in the crystal or whatever. But overall, I mean, the storytelling is predictable, but it's a shonen, and it's a shonen I've been watching now for almost 10 years, so if I wouldn't be able to predict some of the story points, I would have been ashamed to have spent almost 10 years watching this show and not be able to tell where it's going. But yeah, I think that they did a really good job with showing some of the action, along with some of the tie-ins with family, because again, as I've said many times, the family point of this show is a big deal, and it's something that has been a major plot point in this show for years. And overall, I think it's going pretty well. I'm excited to see the wrap-up between Natsu and Zaref. I want to see August finally come to blows with either Mavis or perhaps what's going to happen between him and August or him and uh, Gildarts. And I mean, overall, yeah, I'm just, I'm enjoying the show. I, I always enjoy this show and I like pointing out the things that aren't great, like the fact that there was some predictable story points and some weird moments, but otherwise, I think overall this was a solid episode. Hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. Apart from that, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Please make sure to like and subscribe, check out the comments, and or leave a comment, check out the uh, links down below where you can watch this on Funimation legally. If you don't have Funimation, just watch it legally somewhere, please. I don't know if you're in another country where you can watch it, but please just support the official release, and otherwise, leave a comment letting me know what you guys think, and I'll see you all in the next video. Make sure to be there, and have a good one.